Um, what drew me to performing was watching um, kids TV and kind of going, oh my God, I want to be on that TV show. Or, you know, there was like um, the windmill, I think it was, um, that was on where these dancing kids from Sylvia Young's. And I was, I, brought, I was brought up in Birmingham, so I didn't ever, and I was really jealous of those kids that lived in London. And so that was my first draw to kind of, you know, singing, dancing and acting. And then also I kind of um, started to do that when I was at school, kind of took GCC drama and A-level performing arts and then kind of got me into theatre. Do you know what I love about musicals is that you kind of are doing the three disciplines. So you get to, you know, show off your singing, do a bit of acting and do a bit of dancing and tell story through song, dance and acting. And then I kind of... Um, Audition for a performing arts college, which I went to Erdang, and then the rest is history. I kind of just fell in love with the three disciplines, and yeah. I had known about the film um, for several years, but I never knew about the show. And somebody told me again, you know, they're making this show, and then I kind of heard the songs, and they were so relatable to me personally. Lola, for me, it's one of the biggest black guy role, you know, a role for a black guy. There wasn't that many when I was growing up and, you know, and looking at the West End. I was like, where are the shows that rep best represent me? And then this show came and I was like, wow, this is a role that does represent me. And it, I felt very connected to that. I had never done drag in my life. And I thought to myself, oh my God, how am I going to do this? And then I spent, when I got the job, I spent the whole summer watching Drag Race <laughs> and I was like, okay, I, I kind of get this whole thing about contouring and tucking and, and then I kind of watched how Beyonce, how would Beyonce do this? How would Beyonce you like prepare for such a gigantic role? And I saw, um, I read something about her running on a treadmill when she was kind of um, doing Dreamgirls to kind of, you know, to build the stamina to sing the songs. And so I started that summer before rehearsals, kind of getting on the treadmill at the gym and kind of not belting the songs out, but kind of, you know, going over the words and, you know, singing the songs to myself. Hopefully I didn't, you know, embarrass myself, but kind of just preparing myself for the marathon um, that, you know, the role of Lola was. It was the first time I got to do a lead role in the West End and I thought no one's going to take this away from me and how can I sustain doing eight shows a week because it was an eight show role so then I had to work out how could I have the energy sustain my voice and also my skin and if, I watched what I ate so I kind of I didn't speak until four o'clock I stopped eating at five o'clock because the I found that the um, corsets were so tight that if you try to eat any time late you, I, I, you know, you'd just be ugh. Cindy Lauper actually it was her singing teacher and um, she arranged for me to have these Skype singing lessons with a woman called Katie Agressa who is phenomenal she wasn't there to kind of improve like kind of give you singing techniques it was more to do with maintenance of you kind of looking after your voice and how you use your voice as a singer because a lot of the times when we're speaking especially in loud rooms like you know to be heard we raise our voices and we're putting immense tension and strain on our vocal cords and she just taught me how to kind of just take my voice and look after it and so you know I didn't drink alcohol for two years which was crazy you know but I had to sustain you know looking after myself be the best of what you are good at so if you're a fantastic singer, be the best singer that you can be, be the best dancer that you can be, and be the best actor that you can be. I would always say, work on yourself continuously, you know, even though, in, in, even when you're not working, be working, you know, continuously, because you don't know when the next phone call is going to come, and, you know, um, you know, I had a phone call the other day, and it's like, Matt, we need you to sing this song, and I was like, fantastic, because I had been, I had the whole week, and I'd been started to kind of do my singing lessons again, routines and techniques and stuff. And then, so instantly I could fall into 
hitting those notes that I needed to hit um, in the song. Um, also, for young performers coming up, I think go and see shows, go to class, you know, go to Pineapple, go to, if you can sign up to the Actor Centre, I'm a member of the Actor Centre and I'm an actor that works, you know. So I'm forever, forever working on myself continuously because I think that's what you need to do to survive in this industry, which is very cutthroat at times. I would tell myself, it's okay, it's okay to be upset when you didn't get that role in the nativity <laughs> and you weren't Joseph and you became, you know, you were one of the angels to the back. You know, it's okay, you know, to, um, you know, when the guys bullied you for do doing ballet and, you know, told you that you were a little sissy, look, you know, you, you're going to become somebody, you're going, you're going to take your talent and it's going to grow and you're going to develop into somebody that is going to be on the West End. <laughs> and you know, it, it's, it's hard as a young performer coming up because you're so self-aware of your, you know, and you're so anxious about trying to please all the time. But sometimes we need to just be confident in who we are. And I think that's why Kinky Boots was so fantastic because it was all about just be you, just be the best that you can be, you know, and everybody else will accept you or neglect you or reject you, but if you're being true to yourself, then the whole world is yours.